Yakuza 5, a game released in 2012 in Japan on the PS3 physically and digitally, and then it was released just digitally in 2015 everywhere else. It was released after Kuroyo 2 and released before RGG Ishin, that being the original Ishin and not the 2023 remake. It later got a remastered version of the game, releasing on PS4 in 2019 for Japan and then 2020 for the rest of the world. It then later came to Xbox and PC at the start of 2021. Unlike its older brothers Yakuza 3 and Yakuza 4, this game didn't really see many differences between its original version and its remaster. Even the English localization of the game had very minor changes as for the most part the localization of Yakuza 5 was very accurate to the source material. The remastered version of the game also physically came with a PS3 box of Yakuza 5 in the West to compensate for its lack of physical release initially. There's a fairly long history involved with the original localization of the game which almost never happened, but to summarize, the series wasn't doing too well in the West, so instead of trying to make it work, they were basically ready to give up. This game was actually released after another RGG Studio title being Binary Domain, a weird looking but surprisingly good third person shooter that received a full English localization and even a proper English dub, which featured some big names like Travis Willingham, Troy Baker and Laura Bailey. It also has Big Bo, a handsome and lovable man that is handsome and lovable. However, Binary Domain still didn't really show Sega that the West wanted their Yakuza series, as it was made by RGG Studio like I said, even though Binary Domain would have sold a lot worse if it wasn't given proper English attention. But even still, releasing three years after the initial Japanese release is kind of shocking to think about, especially since it was a PS3 exclusive that came out only on digital stores, even though the PS4 was two years old at this point. They were also competing with some massive games in that year, such as Bloodborne and The Witcher 3 early in the year, with The Witcher 3 being quite a popular game back then and even still today. Then there was Metal Gear Solid 5 and Fallout 4, which came out near Yakuza 5's release, and a game that everyone in the world definitely has played, and everyone definitely loved, Xenoblade X. It even funnily enough came out the same year that Yakuza 0 released in Japan. It was kind of clear then that Yakuza 5, even after they finally gave it the love it deserved, wasn't going to be very popular, which wasn't at all a good sign for Western Yakuza fans. But fortunately, and I'll talk about it in the video on it, Yakuza 0 was one last chance that the series had, and as I always say, we all know how that went. So then that covers basically everything worthwhile about the remastered version of the original Yakuza 5's dodgy release, but you can check out the video on the remastered collection by Austin SV if you want more stuff on it. Anyway, it's time to actually talk about the game itself. As I've noted in the other videos, this game, along with the next game of Ishin, were both essentially the combined second revolution of the series, with the first one being Kenzan and Yakuza 3. Although it was on the same console as Kenzan and 3, this game made many substantial changes and improvements to the game that massively changed games that would come after it. We'll get into some of these changes as I've discussed the gameplay of this game, but to start, the game continued the trend that Yakuza 4 set, and by trend, I mean something that only happened three, technically four times, but anyway. What that trend was, was having the number of playable characters equaling the number of the game itself. So that means that this one had five. The game had Kiryu, Akiyama, and Sajima from Yakuza 4, with it now featuring Haruka and a brand new character of Shinada. Each character, besides Akiyama and Haruka sharing one, have their own playable city. At the end of the game, though, you do get to explore the same old Kamurocho with all five of them. Now then, Haruka, unlike the other four, doesn't actually fight, and instead her main gameplay is a piss-easy rhythm game. The three from Yakuza 4, however, have seen some changes. Kiryu and Akiyama saw the biggest, with Sajima seeing the least. To start, Sajima didn't really get much besides some tweaks to some abilities and some new heat actions. He also received two special mechanics, but these mechanics were also given to the other three fighters. These mechanics were climax heat actions, which you can use by using several heat actions to build up the bar, which then allows you to do one big heat action. Then there's the other mechanic, where each character has their own red spirit thing or whatever it's called. I still don't know if someone said what it actually was in a comment and I immediately forgot. Sajima grabs dudes and swings them around. Kiryu turns invincible and gains some bizarre looking combos. Akiyama literally starts flying and kicking dudes over and over. And then Shinada just has a big tackle grab thing. Now to the other characters. Kiryu has been given a completely new set of animations for a lot of his moveset. It's very slight, but now his attacks do feel a lot more satisfying and are animated a bit more realistically. Akiyama was nerfed to oblivion, losing a lot of his combo potential as well as losing his ability to not be shit, which would have been very useful for him in Yakuza 5 because he is shit. He even got nerfed in the story, but I'll get to that later. Then there's finally the new character of Shinada, who plays sort of similarly to Tanimura in that they're not super offensive characters like Sajima and are a bit more unique oddballs. For Shinada, he's supposed to be a weapons master, and you're encouraged to utilize weapons a lot when you're playing as him. This is further emphasized by his slow combo speed and the fact that his combo is quite short. Lots of people think he's the worst playable character because he's just bad, but I'm not joking when I say that Shinada has some supreme bullshit where if he was in a fighting game, people would ban him immediately. It does require you to unlock some abilities first, but once you do, you can do stuff like sniping people with his foot and doing a finishing hold, which will then knock an enemy onto the ground. This then allows you to do a number of heat actions that deal a million damage, including one where you go back to grabbing an enemy, which then allows you to throw them to the ground and do the same thing. But what if an enemy is blocking? Well, you can quite simply press the grab button mid-combo to then grab them in one frame, meaning you can throw them to the ground, allowing you to do a number of heat actions that deal a million damage. He also has a weird grab counter 
Buster, where you counter someone and grab them, which isn't very useful, but it does allow you to throw an enemy to the ground, allowing you to deal a number of hit acts. Basically, if you know what to do, Shinada's actually quite broken for bosses, but I will admit that a slow speed doesn't make him the best for street encounters. Anyway, another change with Yakuza 5 includes easily the best quality of life combat feature in the franchise, where if you hold down the camera reset button, you won't be able to consume any of your heat. So if you want to stomp someone in the head and don't want to waste your heat on a heat action, you just hold L2, LT, ZL, R, whatever button, and you'll simply not use heat. This feature was then used in every subsequent game, besides Yakuza Like a Dragon, for obvious reasons. Enemy encounters have also been improved. By that I mean that they've scrapped the small conversation you have with an enemy before every encounter, and instead the game just splashes down the enemy's title card, and then you fight with a very seamless transition. Then another thing in this game, which might just be my imagination, I don't know, but I always felt like how the enemy AI functions was changed in Yakuza 5, and was then kept more or less the same for every game after. By that I mean that the behavior enemies have when the nearest enemy is the one that is going to attack you, and how other enemies don't really attack you while another one already is, all is from this game, I think. I don't know, that's just how it feels anyway. And speaking of feeling, a lot of things like the general movement and the feel of the game was changed around a lot, like how you can't just spin in place. It is far more realistic now, but I can definitely understand people that prefer how it used to work because sometimes one-to-one -one movement is just a bit more fun. The game also saw a big graphical improvement. Not as big as Yakuza Kiwami to Yakuza 6, but still something that is way better looking than the other PS3 titles. This game also introduced some new mechanics, some of which were reused eventually, but all of which sort of disappeared immediately. For example, the enemy leader mechanic, where if you defeat the enemy that initiated a street encounter, all of the other enemies would get scared. This mechanic was never reused. Then there were meal bonuses, where you could eat specific foods to increase specific stats, as well as giving you an entire extra health bar, granting you double health. This mechanic, minus the extra health bar, was then used in the original Ishin, but was then removed. Yakuza Like a Dragon had a similar thing with certain foods giving specific stat buffs, but not even Ishin Remake brought back the meal bonus mechanic. Then finally, there was the ability for enemies in random encounters to run away mid-fight, or to call in reinforcements, which was never used until again Yakuza Like a Dragon. Speaking of enemy encounters, this game is always criticised for having extremely high encounter rates. This is a very true and annoying fact, and it's mostly thanks to the fact that in later games, after you beat a group of enemies, enemies are programmed to not spawn right next to you, to not spawn immediately afterwards, or in the Dragon Engine games only, they're programmed to not aggro to you right after a fight. In Yakuza 5, however, enemies can and will immediately fight you right after you've finished one, so sometimes the hardest part of the game is just getting from one place to another. Speaking of difficulty, this game has none. The Yakuza games are never hard unless you do something like play on the hardest difficulty or do some special challenge or something, but Yakuza 5 in particular is a bit of a piss take. Good example of this is once again you can get literally two entire bars of health in a game where you so rarely even get down below 50%. It's not that easy games are bad, but with how many encounters you get, it becomes more of a chore to wipe the floor with dudes as opposed to it being a fun challenge. Then there's the story which is actually pretty good, but kinda unnecessarily long. There are five parts of the game where each character gets their own one, although instead of Akiyama getting his own one, he shares one with Haruka, meaning that the fifth part is just the finale. First there's Kiryu section, which is a good way to start the game. He's now a taxi driver in a faraway city, and his part shows us a perspective of Kiri that we've never seen before, where he's basically really depressed for being a loser who screws everything up all the time, and so now he's trying really hard to not do that. Being Kazuma Kiryu, he of course ends up doing that. But anyway, the first part is very enjoyable, although exploring his city is a bit tedious with how it's designed. His part also has some very likeable characters, like my boy Nakajima. Then there's Sajima's part, where for 50% of it you're not allowed to do anything, and instead have to do a bunch of boring chores. You start in prison, and walk back and forth for hours until you eventually break out, then go back and forth hunting for hours until you eventually get into his main city, which is so restrictive that you can't even cross most of the streets unless crossing at very specific points. His section is very slow and very boring, but it does still have some very nice characters like my boy Himura. Then there's Haruka's section where she's now becoming an idol for whatever stupid, dumb, moronic reason, and so you spend the whole time doing cringe anime stuff and playing rhythm minigames. It's also Akiyama's section where he gets to do bugger all but be present. Haruka slash Akiyama's section is also just kind of long and boring, but it does still have some very nice characters like my boy Horie. Then finally you get to Shinada's section, which is literally the best part of the entire game, complete with an incredibly fun, unique and enjoyable story, and some of the best characters the franchise has ever seen. Shinada's section is so good that it even starts out in a completely unique way. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
writing in Shinada's section is emotionally driven in a good way and it makes you happy, sad, laugh, cry, all that sort of stuff. Many people suck and bitch online about how Shinada's the worst protagonist ever, but if you ever see someone saying something like that, be sure to be as kind to that person as possible, as they were very obviously bullied as children. The only downside to Shinada's story is that at some point, it ends. Then there's the finale section, which is kind of slow and boring once again, and it ends weirdly. But Shinada's ending is the best because it's really happy and sad at the same time. Yakuza 5 was also famously given a 40 out of 40 score by the Japanese magazine Famitsu. This was very obviously because Shinada's section is last, and the reviewers would have been playing that, forgotten about the rest of the game being slow and boring, and then giving it a 40 out of 40. I do still really like a lot of the direction of Yakuza 5, with everything feeling way more human than other games, but I would have preferred it a lot more if, say, stuff like Sajima's section was half the length, or maybe if Shinada's section was the only section of the whole game, although if that happened, all video game companies in the world would go bankrupt because no one would ever be able to beat Yakuza 5. Or, a big thing that is so blatantly obvious that RGG Studio should fire themselves for never thinking of. Instead of Haruka becoming some jackass stupid idol cringe Japan bullshit, she should have instead learned martial arts, and her whole story section should have been her entering a big martial arts tournament rather than some dumb idol thing. Kazuma Kiri, the fourth chairman of the Tojo clan, the guy who shoots rocket launches and helicopters and kills people, is my dad and I love him. Just think about it for a sec. Kiryu leaves the kids at the orphanage all alone, and Haruka, thinking about how she got smacked in the face by Mina and Yakuza 3, thinks, Hmm, maybe I should actually follow in my father's footsteps and learn how to defend the people I care about, except I'll actually do it successfully, Lamau. So what she does is she goes out and she starts learning karate or something. Then after however many years, as part of her training, she enters a big national tournament. You know who could have trained her too? Why, of course, it could have been Sosuke Kumaki, the grandson of Kiryu's mentor, rather than Sosuke training Kiryu, which would have been all symbolic and whatever. Then Akiyama's involvement with Haruka's part still could have been the same thing, where he's just sort of sitting around defending her and whatever, but now it makes sense that he needs to do that because Kanae or whoever is training kids to try and beat Haruka to death in the tournament. Then Akiyama's all, nah uh, and beats them up instead. Then as well, Haruka wouldn't have to have random encounters like how it already works, but she still could have fought other martial arts kids on the street and shit to gain XP. It all would have been there and it all would have been perfect. But no, we had to wait until Yakuza Like a Dragon until we got a playable female character that could actually do things. Yakuza is a game about beating the shit out of people. Anyway, this game also features a very revolutionary soundtrack. Being directed by Mitsuharu Fukuyama rather than Hidenori Shoji, the soundtrack has a very different direction. The songs are still very clearly Yakuza songs, but Yakuza 5 did what Yakuza 4 did with its massive increase in the diversity of the sound, but this time went even further beyond and created a soundtrack that sounds incredible. There are so many different genres and feelings when listening to these songs, and we also got iconic stuff like Buck and Me Tire, the song that became a big meme and sent the popularity of this franchise to the bloody moon and back. Unfortunately, this was the last Yakuza title Mitsuharu Fukuyama ever worked on, but at least in 2020, he did say how he was happy to see that a song he worked on almost eight years prior became so popular today. And so, while this game is very slow and at times quite boring, it's still one of the better Yakuza titles. It has my favourite character in the franchise, story elements I really liked, and songs that I still love, but most importantly, it has Shinada. Did I mention Shinada? It has Shinada in it. Now then, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if a single person comments you may or dream, I will quite simply break into your home and steal your dog. So instead of commenting that, why don't you click the various buttons below the title of the video, and I hope you look forward to the next one, where I'll talk about RGG Ishin and also its remake, Like a Dragon Ishin.